In this video, we'll be looking at new and existing features of Plat relating to exploring the history of events and other types of record. Primarily, these features are provided as information gathering tools, helping you to investigate incidents and make sense of unexpected data. Using these tools, you'll be able to explore the sequence of changes that have been made to a record over time, who made those changes and when. Platt has always maintained a history of records as they are created and later updated, and access to this information is provided through a dedicated history page. To access this page, you first need to know the unique ID of the record whose history you wish to explore. For an event, you can find this by navigating to the full or tabbed page and looking in your browser's address bar. Here is the record ID for this particular event. Take that information and construct a URL in the form forward slash db forward slash event, then the record ID forward slash history. So this is Platt's history page. This has been provided since the very first version of Platt. It shows all of the changes that have been made to a particular record over time. Those changes are provided in reverse order. So to see details of the record's creation, you would scroll to the bottom. Here we can see the date and time when the record was created and who created it. We can then step up through the various changes that were made to this record over time. Again, the left-hand side telling us when the change was made, the right-hand side who made that change. Down the center here, we see a summary of what aspect of the record was changed. In this case, it tells us that the clients were modified. However, this is not to say that there was a change to the named client for this event. It could simply be the case that some other aspect of their allocation, such as their tasks, were changed. To see details of precisely what was changed at a particular version of the record, we can hover the mouse over the corresponding word changes. For a very simple change, such as the addition of a comment, you may be able to interpret the contents of this tooltip. However, it is generally expected that this information will only be used by Platt service providers. To see a snapshot of the record as it looked at a particular moment in time, you can access Platt's document version page. So this is another page that has been provided since the very first version of Platt. Again, however, this page is intended primarily for use by our support team. As the information provided from the history, and document version pages is of a highly technical nature. We've always wanted to present this information in a more user-friendly form. The next version of Platt will aim to achieve this ambition through the introduction of a new page that we're calling Snapshots. This new Snapshots page will eventually replace the history and document version pages entirely. However, for the time being, all three of these pages will be provided together. You will need to use the history and document version pages for viewing information about updates that were made prior to the date of the next Platt release. And you will be able to begin using the new snapshots page for any changes made after that date. One of the main objectives when designing this new page was to present all of the information that you might want to see about the history of a record in one single place. The left hand side of the page is dedicated to information previously found only on the history page and the right hand side, this area here, to information previously found only on the document version page. So let's look now at the history of this particular event using the new snapshots page. As with the old history page, all of the changes are presented in reverse order. So to see the information about the creation of the event, we'll scroll down here and focus our attention on the last box down here. This tells us when the event was created and who created it. And the right hand side shows us what the record looked like when it was originally created. So the information here is very similar to what is found on the document version page, the big difference being that on the document version page, whenever there is a reference to another record, all that we see is the ID of that record. So here is a reference to the event type, and here is a reference to the client. So you would need to go scribbling around translating those IDs into records in order to understand what they refer to. In the new snapshots page, we've done that work for you. So you can see here that we are presenting the name of the service user, care worker, and we are showing the description of the event type. Let's look now at the first change that was made to this event after its initial creation. So that's version two of the event, which we can see by hovering the mouse here. Again, we see when that change was made and who made it, and it tells us here a summary of what change was made. We can see it was the log of a care worker arrival. On the right-hand side, you can see that there is some use of color. So green color indicates new data. So here is the information about the care worker's arrival being introduced, when it was logged, the time of their arrival, the logging method used, and the logging method reason. The next version of this event, version three, is where the actual finish was logged. Let's look at that now. 
So now the actual start is no longer shown in green and that's because this is no longer new information. The new information is the actual finish. The next version of this document, version four, is the first time where we're seeing existing information being changed. So let's take a look at this version where we are looking at a change to mins. So that is the duration of the event. And if we scroll down a bit, we'll see the old version of mins is shown in red and struck through, that's 60, and the new version that it's changed to is shown in green, and that's 90. So the event duration has been increased by 50%. The summary on the left only tells us the, use, the change that the user made. The right hand side will show us any knock-on changes that were made as a result of that. So here we see that by increasing the event duration by 50%, there is a knock-on increase to the service user charge and the pay amount for the care worker. After the increase in duration, the next version of the document is when it was invoiced. So we hover the mouse here, we see in the summary, the reference to the invoicing process. And here we see the introduction of an invoice transaction with a link to the corresponding invoice document. The event was then paid. Here we see the payroll transaction and a link to the pay advice. Later, there was a credit flag added to the invoice amount. There it is being introduced here. And finally, the event was credited and we get a reference to the credit note. So with this new snapshots page, we hope you will now be able to confidently explore the history of an individual event. This page is also available for exploring the history of medication, of run allocations, and of availability. Sometimes though, you might not be able to find the record that you are needing to analyze. Perhaps it's been deleted, or at least you think it's been deleted, or perhaps you need to look at the interaction between that record and other adjacent records. To aid your investigation of these more difficult scenarios, the next version of Platt will provide not only the ability to view the history of a single record, but also to explore the history of an entire calendar. This tool uses data from the audit trail for events, for availability, run allocations, people, and organizations to recreate exactly how an individual service user's calendar looked at a point in time. Let's take a look then at one of our service users, in particular, the calendar for Rita Jardine. Of course, this calendar is currently showing live data, but what if we wanted to look back at how Rita's calendar looked at a particular point in time, perhaps a week ago, a month ago, or even further back? We can now do that by clicking options and selecting historical snapshot. When I tick that box, I'm required to specify the date of the snapshot that I wish to look at. I'm gonna go all the way back to the 1st of August. The first thing you'll notice when the calendar refreshes is that there are no longer any events. That's because I am now looking at a snapshot of Rita's calendar as it appeared at midnight on Sunday, the 1st of August. And at that time, no events had yet been added to this calendar. If I hover the mouse over the right pointing arrow here, you'll see that it tells me when was the next update to Rita's events after the snapshot that we're currently looking at. So after midnight on Sunday the 1st of August, the next update to Rita's events was made at 3.02 on that very same day. It was me and I added a new event to the calendar, a 60 minute event Monday to Friday starting at 7 a.m. Let's click here to see that update playing out on the calendar. So we've jumped forward and we're now looking at a snapshot of Rita's calendar as it appeared at two minutes past three in the afternoon on Sunday the 1st of August. There's now one event on the calendar and you can see that there is a flashing yellow dot on that event to indicate to us that this is the update that's specifically relevant to the snapshot we're currently looking at. Hovering the mouse over the yellow dot indicates who made the change and what that change was. If I return the mouse to the forward arrow, we'll see that it now tells us information about the next update made to this client's calendar. So at 3.02, the next update to Rita's events was 3.03, .03, one minute later. Again, it was me. Again, I added a new event. Let's click here to see that update playing out in front of us. So we've scrolled forward a minute in time and we're now looking at a snapshot of Rita's calendar as it appeared at 3.03. .03. The yellow dots have moved down to a new event which is now visible at 1.30 p.m. on Monday to Saturday. Again, I can hover the mouse to see what the update was and who performed that update. 
you'll notice that the yellow dots are no longer showing on the morning event. That's because this is no longer new at the time of the snapshot that we're currently viewing. I can, however, now go back. If I was to jump back to the previous update, go back to 302, the afternoon event once again disappears and the yellow dots return to the morning event. So let's click forward a few times and see the evolution of Rita's calendar. First, Monday to Saturday is added, the Sunday event is added, then domestic events are added on Tuesdays and on Fridays. The next update after this one is worth taking a closer look at. You'll see that we're now looking at the snapshot from 3.08 p.m. and the next update made after that is at 3.12 p.m. and that was an update to one of the existing events, the morning event, and it was a change to the when. Let's click to see that update. And you'll notice the change here is that this event series, which previously took place on Monday to Friday, is no longer appearing on Wednesday. You can see there is this white hatched box here to indicate something that has been removed or moved on the calendar. So I went into the regular event series and unticked the box for Wednesday. We can continue to snap shot through all of the changes made to this service user's calendar. We're now at a snapshot of the snapshot from Monday the 30th of August. This is the same date that we're actually looking at the data for. And not surprisingly, you'll see that the update that we're looking at here is the arrival of the care worker at that particular event. And also not surprisingly, the next update after that is the logging of the actual finish. So you see the introduction of that thick right border there to indicate the care worker's departure. Let's click on that event now. You can see that there is no edit button and no delete button. That's because, of course, we are looking at a snapshot of this client's calendar, so it's not um, relevant or suitable for us to be making any changes here. We cannot delete, edit, or in any other way update data on this page. It is an entirely read-only view of that data. In place of the edit and delete buttons, however, we do have access to this view history button. Using this button, we can access the snapshots page that we were looking at earlier for this particular event. You'll notice when I drop down the box here that there are two options. I can look at that history in a new tab or in this tab. If I look at it in this tab, I'm going to lose my place and getting the calendar back to the state that it's in now is going to take a few clicks. So it's quite convenient to access the uh, snapshots page in a new tab. We do, however, provide both options because the new tab option might not work so well for you if you have a pop-up blocker in place. So I'm going to open the snapshot page for this mon Monday morning event in a new tab. So we've looked at this page earlier. The only difference that's worth noting, however, is that if we scroll down, you'll see there is a flashing yellow dot here. This draws our attention to the particular revision of that document that is relevant to the snapshot that we're looking at here. So we're looking at the logging of the actual finish for that event, and therefore the actual finish log is identified and highlighted by the yellow dot there. I'm going to scroll forward now to 3 p.m. on the same day. And you'll notice that at that time, the Thursday and Friday instances of this morning event are both assigned to Lisa Bailey and they're both entirely valid. If I look at what is the next update after 1500, you'll see that one minute later, there was a change to care workers for the Thursday 7 a.m. event. Let's click here to see that update playing out in front of us. There you are, you see the flashing yellow dot appears here, changed to care workers, and we can see that Thomas Glan was assigned to that event. But if we look at the Friday instance, we'll see that this has now turned red and Lisa Bailey's name is crossed out. And why is that? Well, if we click on that event, you'll see it tells us that Lisa Bailey has a clashing holiday event. We can click on the link there to see details of that holiday. And you can see that it begins at midnight on Thursday the 2nd. Looking back at Rita's calendar, 
Thursday the 2nd here, so if Lisa was on holiday, that would mean she would be unavailable for this event. Clearly, that is why an alternative care worker has been assigned to that instance of the event. If we click again here, we navigate one minute later, and you can see that the second event instance affected by that care worker's holiday is also updated with an alternative carer assigned. So when we're navigating through changes, using the buttons here, we're able to see physical changes made to this client's events. What we're not able to strictly navigate to is changes that affect Rita's events but were made elsewhere. So we're not able to navigate to the precise time when the holiday event for Lisa was added. We skip over that and we jump to the first update that was made after that holiday was introduced as a result of that holiday being introduced. So now we're looking at the allocation to the first of the two events affected by the holiday and here we are looking at the second one. So when we're looking at a snapshot, this snapshot takes account of data modified elsewhere, modifications to care worker availability, modifications to care workers other duties, holidays, uh, leave of any kind, we'll see any changes made to run allocations, to um, the validation rules for the organization, and any other data that could possibly impact upon the snapshot of the service user calendar. However, when scrolling through here, we're only able to jump to changes that are specifically made to this client's events. So using the options button with the new version of Plat, you'll be able to choose a moment in time to view the history of a service user's calendar. If you're investigating an incident, perhaps you know a time when the data was definitely right. Use this as your snapshot date and then use the back and forward buttons to navigate through the changes until you pinpoint exactly the point in time when a problem occurred. If you identify an event or events whose history requires further investigation, you can click on these from the calendar snapshot to access the new record through the snapshots page where you can perform additional analysis.